So how to trade on the stock market, how to invest in the stock market. So I'm going to share my portfolio every day. I'll try. So first I use Questrade to trade. Great. Um, so I'll tell you how I trade, how to, how I pick my stocks. So let's look at my position. So with Quest Trade, I own 138 shares of Teva Pharmaceuticals. I bought it at $15. Right now, it's worth $11.40 per share. So I'm losing $500. But I I don't have to sell right now. So I'm I'm holding on to it because I know eventually it's going to go back up. Uh, I Tend, I use Google Finance to look at stocks. So um, here, Teva. So basically, all all I do is I look at companies with big market caps, companies that don't that won't disappear, and I just wait for the stock to go down. When I find when I when I feel like it's a good price to buy according to the charts, then I'll just buy and and. I'll, I'll hold on to it until it goes back up. Sometimes I hold on two weeks, three weeks, sometimes three months, sometimes six months, sometimes a year. So it really depends. But uh, I'll be honest, most of the time I, I hold on to them for three months. Uh, so Teva, I bought at uh, 16 when it was trading in when it was trading at 17 or 18. I put an order to buy at 16. So when it dropped below 16, I, I bought at 16. And then... Um, it dropped again below 14 so I bought some more at 14 and uh, now it's it dropped even more so I might buy more but uh, if, if it drops to 10 I'm gonna buy some more if not I'm just gonna hold on to it and wait until it goes back up uh, I'm probably gonna sell at 1750 so if I sell at 1750 and uh, I bought at 15 that's sixteen percent, sixteen percent return, and it could be in less than a year. It could be in three months. I don't know when it's going to go back up, but eventually it's going to go back up. Um, uh, so I don't bother myself much with news or financial ratios or anything like that because I know that it's, it's really not related to, to news or or performance it sometimes sometimes good news come out and the stock goes down sometimes bad news come out and the stock goes up so i haven't found a direct correlation i mean if 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 there was a direct correlation everyone would be doing it and be successful at it so i just look at the chart estimate what's a good uh, what's a good buying price buy it and just hold on to it if i'm right I'll sell it pretty soon. If I'm wrong, I just have to hold on to it a bit longer. And I tend to choose stocks that pay out dividends. So while I'm waiting, so in the in the case where I'm wrong, and I have to wait longer for the stock to go back up, well, while I'm waiting, I'm collecting dividends. So here you can see the dividend yield. So let's look at some uh, past uh, trades I made. Where can I show you that? Executions. So this is one month execution. So yeah, I bought some Qualcomm. Let's look at three months. So you see, I, had, I bought some Qualcomm at 51.87, sold it at 54.25. And you could see the date, August 22nd to October 24th. So it's not much in dollars, but in percentages, 54.25. And I, the only re reason I sold this is because I wanted to buy more Teva pharmaceuticals. So 54.25 divided by 51.87. So that's a 4.5% return in two and a half months. So 4.5, 4 let's say, and let's times, uh, times five months. So it's about 22% per year. If I keep repeating this process, which most of the time I do, I also bought uh, here is what sell, sold for Jan quantity, fill price, total value. See, it only goes three months. I want to go back further. Uh, 
I also made money with uh, with Ford Options. I believe I bought at 145. Now I can't show you because it only goes back three months here. I have to open another account statement. But yeah, I remember I bought at 145, and as you can see here, I sold at 1.8. Uh, so 1.8 divided by 1.45. That's a 24% return. And this one, I think I held it for two, three months. So that's 24% in in three months. So I think that's better than a savings account. And that's a great way to make your money grow. Um, so yeah, so yeah, just because right now I'm selling, I'm, I'm losing on um, Teva Pharmaceuticals, I just have to hold on to it. And if I have more liquidity, I'll probably buy more at 10. At ten dollars, uh, I'll show you my other account with uh, CIBC Investors Edge. So with Investors Edge, I have a TFSA and I have an RESP for my son. Now this annoys me because in my RESP I bought Enbridge. I bought some Enbridge shares. I bought them at 48.75 uh, and here I can show you the transaction history here so here look I bought 48.75 I bought 51 shares at 48.75 and then the next day it, it went almost to $50 I, I thought of selling for like a, a few minutes there I thought of selling but then no, I'm gonna hold on to it I want to make a bit more and then the next day it dropped it dropped to 46.85 as you can see here so it dropped below my uh, 4875 but so one day I was up like maybe 60 70 dollars or if you look at percentage wise it was probably like three percent and then the next day I'm down uh, almost a hundred dollars so obviously either I'm gonna buy back buy some more at uh, 45 or I'm just gonna hold on to it hold on it wait until it goes back up and then sell and make a profit and while I'm waiting I'm getting five percent dividends per year that's how I trade on the stock market. That's how I pick my stocks. I look at big companies that don't dis won't disappear with a, a good, uh, a high market cap, and I just wait for the stock to go down for whatever reason it is. There's always a reason it goes down, and there's a there's always a reason that it goes up. So why tire yourself with figuring out the reason and understanding the reason? Anyways, you're never gonna have the full picture. You're never gonna have all the information uh, that the experts have. Sometimes there's always like there's always um, a piece of information that's missing that's actually making the stock go up or down and you just can't explain it so just I just look at big name companies um, and just wait for the stock to go down I look at whatever Warren Buffett holds uh, look at uh, the, the, the companies that he holds and I just put them in, my, in a portfolio and I keep watching them until one of them when if one of the stocks go down then uh, then I'll buy it. For example, Coca-Cola is something that Warren Buffett holds and will always hold. So uh, right now it's trading at 45, 46. But I had I bought them. I had bought some at 40 dollars when it dropped to 40. See, look, 52 week. It, it went to 39.88, and the highest is 46.98. I had bought some at 40, and I think I sold it at 44. So so yeah. So I just look at big name companies and. Wait until the stock drops for whatever reason. Like it dropped to forty, doesn't mean it's gonna disappear. Or that just something made something made it drop to forty. Probably a bad quarter or whatever. Whatever the reason is, I don't care. For me, if it drops, I just buy some and then wait until it goes back up. So forty-four divided by forty is is ten percent. So yeah, ten percent. And that I think also took three months. So yeah, just keep repeating the process. So let's look at my TFSA. I got more activity in, in my TFSA, and I'm, so here here's proof of collecting dividends: thirty-five dollars on on New York NYMT, New York, New York Mortgage Trust, which is uh, let's look at the uh, the rate: twelve percent per year dividends. So that's amazing. 
I think this I bought at six. It keeps going up and down, but I don't. I'm not selling it. I'm keeping it for the twelve percent dividends. Because my goal is to make between ten and twenty percent per year. So if I'm already making twelve percent guarantee without doing anything, then I just hold on to it. But since I bought it, I think I bought it at six oh five, six dollars and five cents. Like it's it's gone up. It went up to above six fifty. But I, I didn't sell it. I just keep it, hold on to it. And it, look, it even went below six uh, this week. It went below six. So held on to it and it went back up to 628. But while I'm holding on to it, I'm getting dividends. If it goes if it goes above seven, I'll sell. But right now I'm just collecting the dividends and here's one, here's a dividend that I got. So it all obviously depends on how many shares you own. I, I own 175 shares. And the dividends are paid quarterly. And there's, that's just a tax on the dividends because I'm not a U.S. resident and it's a U.S. stock. Um, I also bought some Enbridge in my TFSA. I bought it at 50. I'm losing on it, of course, because it's at it's trading right now at 46.85. But I'm just holding on to it, and as long as it takes. And while I'm waiting, I'm collecting dividends. Um, this is a REIT in Canada coming our real estate investment trust here's a dividend I own 100 shares and here's this one pays monthly dividends Here, let's check it out CUF UN this one pays 8.23 yearly and um, and it pays it the dividends are paid monthly so yeah this is a good stock and look if you look uh, since 2000 it's been paying dividends consist consistently for every for every month but unfortunately the the look it's always been 12.25 cents 12.25 cents but recently they dropped it down to 10 cents i actually had more shares but i i bought some at 12 i believe and i sold it at 13 and but there's i also bought some at 14 so the only ones I'm holding right now are the ones I bought at 14, waiting for it to go past 14, maybe 14.50, and I'll sell. Um, what else do I have? HPC dividends, but that, this was a bad stock. I bought it. I bought it at 13.74, and I think right now it's I'm I'm losing money on it. But I, oh, it's at 12 dollars right now. I'm waiting for it to get past uh, 13.50, and I'll sell. And yeah, so. I didn't sell it yet, so I'm not really losing. So, I, but um, I'm at a loss position, but I'm holding on to it. So Ford. So here you see Ford. I sold at twelve thirty-eight. Ford. I bought at eleven thirty. I think if we can go back, let's see how far back we can go. Oh, we can go back thirteen months. Let's choose Ford. So all the activity with Ford. So Ford, I bought at 11.30, sold at 12.38 from April to October. And I've been collecting dividends too. So if you, so let's see how much money I made with Ford or percentage wise, of course. So also I could just subtract here. So twelve point thirty eight minus eleven point three times ninety shares. So I made ninety seven US dollars with Ford. So here you can see that the amount that I sold is less than the amount that it cost me to buy because I had to convert from Canadian to US. But I still own it in US, so I haven't converted it back to to Canadian. If I convert back to Canadian, I'm actually gonna lose because when I bought when I bought the shares in the first place, uh, US was high, was much higher than when I sold the shares. So it's I still hold US dollars, so I'm only going to convert it back once the US goes higher again. So that's the problem when you buy different currency than than the one you actually need. You have to be careful when you buy and when you you have to be careful of the conversion rate. Um, so yeah, but. It, in actual US dollars, I made 97 US dollars, which represents, let's look at the percentage, 12.38 divided by 11.3, it's a 9.5% in April, so 
four, 10 minus four, so six months. So almost 10% in six months, plus dividends. So I collected dividends twice, $16 and $18. And I believe the four dividends, let's see how much they are worth. So four is 4.85, so I collected an extra two point from even almost 3%, I collected an extra 3%, so uh, 10 plus three, so 13% in six months with Ford. Let's look at another BMO. BMO bought it at 90.50, sold it at 96.50 in 10 minus five in five months. I actually had an opportunity to sell earlier, maybe even two or three months, but I wanted, I wanted, I wanted to sell at 99, then it dropped all the way down to 89. So then I said to myself, next time it goes to 96, 97, I'm selling, I don't care. I'm not gonna hold on to it longer. So yeah, let's see how much that gives us. 96.5 divided by 90.5. Sorry, 965 divided by 905. So that's 6.6% .6 in five months. And I also collected dividends, ten, $10.80. So I collected dividends once. So let's go see how much that's worth. So uh, 3.63, well, right, see right now it's hot, higher. So if I had held on to it, I could have sold higher. But that's not my goal. My goal really is to, to make a profit on every trade and to make more money than if I had just left my money in savings account and to make sure that my money, my money grows past inflation. Otherwise, the money I have loses value every every year, and for me, ten to twenty percent per year is a good a good return. Okay, so let's see what else I have here. BMO, oh, CIBC, but but at one hundred five point four, and I bought some more at one hundred four, and I collected dividends, and then I sold everything. So the 105 and the 104 that I bought, I sold it at 109. I should have held on to it because it's actually CIPC is actually higher right now. Yeah, 114. Yeah. So this is uh, I could have made more with that, but whatever. As long as I make some profit. So let's see how much I made here. Well, here it's in Canadian, so we can calculate it. We can see 4044 minus 2606 minus 1271. So I made $167 on $167 on let's say 26.06 plus 12.71 so on 38.77 so 167 on what did we say 38.77 38.77 so it's about 4.3 percent so that wasn't a great trade for me I don't know why I sold so early but 4% so not bad, plus $15 dividends. So if we include the dividends, so 15 plus 167 divided by 38.77, oh, 15 plus 167 divided by 38.77, that's a 4.6, 4.7% return in how much? Well, I bought some in September. See. See this one here, look at this, 104 to 109 in three weeks, not even. So just just the 109.5 divided by 104, 109.5, 109.5 divided by 104, that's 5.2% in three weeks. So, uh, so yeah, just giving you an example that sometimes you can guess right, and sometimes uh, you have to wait a bit longer. Uh, what else? Let's look at a different stock. So this, oh yeah, this is Cominar. This I bought several times, so it's going to be a little confusing. So at first, I bought 100 shares at $14, collecting dividends every month. Then I bought some more at 13.15, collecting dividends again. And then I bought some more at 12.35, collecting collecting dividends. And then I sold what I bought here at 13.15 at and 12.35. I sold it at 13.53 combined. 
So and look look at the time span. So the twelve thirty five August fourth, and I sold it August thirty first or September sixth. So four weeks in four weeks, I made thirteen point fifty three divided by twelve thirty five. So four weeks, nine point four percent plus the dividends that I've been, that I've been collecting. So that. This was a this was a good stock to buy, and I could hold on to it more if I want. And collecting dividends, as you can see, every month twenty seven dollars, twenty four, twenty four, twenty four, twelve, twelve. Obviously, depending on how many shares you own. Okay, let's look at another stock. See, oh, this one's at a loss. Bought too early. I bought it at fifteen at first. Then look how it went to nine dollars. I bought some more though at nine dollars, and then I sold the ones I bought at ten twenty five. Looks like I, I sold too early because I, I went all the way back up to 13. I definitely sold too early here, but whatever. I just wanted to make some profit. So 10.25 divided by 9.05. So I made 13% in from June, end of June to September. So July, August, so two months, almost three months, less than three months. So less than three months, I made... Uh, what was the number again? I forgot. 1025 divided by 905. 13% in less than three months. Plus a little bit of dividends. But obviously I'm losing on the initial the initial shares that I bought. I bought 75 shares at $15. But then I bought some more, 127 at 905. And I sold those 127 at 1025, giving me 13% return. And I'm holding on to this, waiting until it goes back up, and then I'll sell it. But there's nothing wrong with buying back more when it goes down as long as it's a company that you're sure it's not going to disappear it's just for me when a stock goes m lower than what i bought it at it's another buy up buying opportunity so let's see what cve is at right now oh it's at 1357 wow i totally regret selling it at 10. see i sold it at 10 here i should have held on to it whatever it's still pretty good but it could have been way better but sometimes you can you think it's gonna go even higher, but it doesn't. Then you regret that you didn't sell. So you really have to have a strategy of you have to focus on your strategy and don't uh, don't uh, distract yourself. So my strategy is just to make per trade is to make at least seven percent per trade, and then just repeat those trades throughout the year several times, and so at the end of the year I can make twenty percent or more. But anything between 10 and 20% compared to, to the market, that's very good. So if you can make 10% per year at least, that's pretty good. Consistently, of course. So every year, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%. compound interest, you're going to double your money very soon. Here, let's look at an example of compound interest. If you make 10% every year for, let's say, uh, five years, that's 1.6 times your money. So if you start off with uh, ten thousand dollars, and you make ten percent every year with compound interest, after five years, you're gonna have sixteen thousand uh, dollars. Let's say ten years. One point one in ten years. You start off with ten thousand dollars, and you don't contribute after that. You just start off with ten thousand. After ten years, you're gonna have. Twenty-five thousand dollars. So imagine if you if you make twenty percent, twenty percent every year for ten years, compound interest. That's six times your money. So you start off with ten thousand dollars in ten years, you're gonna have sixty thousand dollars, sixty-one thousand dollars, and that's only if you contribute once. But if you contribute every year, that's you're gonna you're gonna end up with what much much more. So yeah, so that's my goal is just to make your money, make my money grow better than a savings account and without the headache of buying real estate and dealing with people from my computer, I can trade and and uh, make my money grow without uh, from from the comfort of my own home, you know. Uh, all right, so man, I'm I'm actually still disappointed. This actually went even higher. I sold too early. But at least uh, it's getting closer to my 15 so I can recover my 15, right? Okay, so what else do I have here? 
Enbridge, yeah, I think we spoke about Enbridge. Just bought it recently, 50. Went, went down to 46, but I'm holding on to it. Ford, we talked about it. GM, yeah, GM was good, actually. GM, I bought at 33.50, and I sold it at 39.30. So that's a return of of uh, 33.5. 17% return in how much time? From April to September, so nine minus four, so in five months, seventeen percent in 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 nine months is it seventeen or nineteen. Three nine three divided by thirty three five. Yeah, seventeen percent in in five months. So that's very good. My goal is to make twenty percent per year, and I made seventeen in five months. So if I just keep repeating the process, then it's very good. And I collected dividends also while I was waiting for five months. I collected twelve dollars. And eleven dollars. So, uh, so be more. So this was a, a positive trade. Positive trade, uh, partially positive trade. Yeah, no, this is a positive trade. This is a also partially positive trade. This I'm still holding. This was a positive trade. Positive trade. This I'm I'm losing, but I'm still holding. Uh, let's look at this. Oh yeah, this was crazy. This stock was crazy. So this I bought at seventeen dollars. Oh man, this was crazy. HCG. So this stock. So yeah, I was applying the strategy that I was telling you about at the beginning, where I just look at big stocks that whenever they drop, I just buy some. <laughs> so this over here. So in one day, it went from like in the 30s or in the 20s to 17. And one day it went from it was trading in the 20s and then if i could just get the, perf the right date but yeah it was in the high 20s and it in one day it went to 17. so i'm like wow perfect opportunity so i bought some at 17. but then the next day after i bought some at 17 the next day it dropped all the way to like six five six dollars and five dollars see here 5.99 52 week the lowest was five dollars so i was holding at 17 and it went all the way down to five now if I had continued my strategy, I would buy some more at five or six, but I was I was scared, so I didn't buy. But I I didn't sell. I held I held on to it, <clears throat> and then so this was in April, end of April. Held on to it. Held on to it. it, it for, like from six dollars, it went to eight dollars in like the, in the same day. So I could have made in one day. I could have made like uh, twenty percent. Eight divided by six, twenty five percent, thirty three percent in the same day but i was scared to buy because when something goes from 17 to to five you sort of you can't help yourself but you panic anyway so i held on to it and then slowly goes back up see here ten dollars wait let's let's make it smaller let's look at at it, at it in a three month period so april so yeah so yeah five six eight ten nine goes back down and then news come out that Warren Buffett uh, bought some shares and then when that news came out the stock went remember I bought at 17 look the stock goes here you could you could see the price over here while I'm moving 13 14 15 and then it went to 19 after after uh, the news came out that Warren Buffett wanted to buy some so while when I was here did I have any? How how would I know that Warren Buffett was gonna was gonna involve himself with this stock? You know. So it really it's it doesn't uh, it doesn't make sense seriously. Anyways. So yeah, it went up to nineteen, and even when I knew when the news came out that, that Warren Buffett was gonna buy some, you don't know how, how it's gonna Im, Im, impact the stock. How how high will the price go up after that? So as soon as it went past 17, I was happy because I bought it at 17. I just sold it. I sold it at 18. I sold it at one one more dollar. I but I think it went all the way up to 19. And good thing I sold it at 18 because after that it went back down. 17, 16, 17, 17, 16, 15, 15. And right now it's at 1386. So good thing for this stock. Good thing I didn't get greedy and uh, hold on to it longer. And I, I sold right away. Um, so I bought it at seven. I bought too early, but luckily it went back up. And as soon as it went back up, I sold it at eighteen. 
So this was how much? And I still made some profit on it at the end of the day. 18 divided by 17, that's 5.8%, so almost 6%. Uh, in how much time so April so May oh it's like two months May June yeah two months in two months six percent uh, uh, off a stock that I bought way too high <laughs> if I had bought at five and sold at 15 that would have been perfect it would have been I would have made three times but knowing me I, I would have probably sold at eight if I had bought at five I would have sold at six seven or eight I, I would not have held on to it this that long so uh so yeah so that's another profitable trade coca-cola bought it at 40.75 sold it at 44.50 so what is that 44.50 divided by 40.75 oh. 44.50 divided by 40.75 so that's nine percent nine percent and I also collected dividends, eight dollars, nine percent. How much time? So from December to end of May. So yeah, five months. In five months, nine percent plus eight dollars dividend. I think it was trading at three percent uh, dividend. Coca Cola. Yeah, three percent. So I got that once per quarter. So divided by four. Yeah, so about one percent. So yeah, so ten percent from it, from Coca Cola in five months so perfect so that's another profitable trade so look how many times i made seven to ten or even seven to fifteen percent per trade uh, in, in 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 like short periods so that's not even in one year so i just repeat the process and hopefully at the end of the year it gives me a good overall return so i don't use all my money in one trade of course i, I so if i have ten thousand dollars i'll i'll split it up into fifteen hundred or two thousand dollars per per trade per ship per stock i don't want to put everything in one place also because you never know but also because it gives me i, I want to have liquidity to buy something else if if i find another opportunity then then i can then i have enough then i have liquidity to, to take advantage of this other opportunity and instead of being stuck because sometimes i'm stuck holding on to something waiting for it to come back up so while I'm waiting, I'll be missing missing out on other opportunities. So, for example, HBC, I'm still holding on to it. So, if imagine I have if I had put everything in HBC, then I would have missed out on all the other stocks that I bought. So that's why I don't put everything in one place. But you also have to the minimum that you should put in is a thousand dollars because because with fees and everything, it's it's not going to be beneficial if you put less than a thousand dollars. It's not going to be worth it. I mean. Because it's still it's still seven dollars per trade with Investor's Edge, so um, every trade I make, I, it costs every buy and sell I make costs me fourteen dollars. So I have to take that into consideration. But if it's a, if it's above a thousand or two thousand dollars, then it's a, it's a, the trades are don't make a difference. The the transaction fees don't make a difference. So yeah. So BMO profitable, CM, CIBC profitable, coming out profitable. This is somewhat profitable. Made profit from it once and holding on to the rest. This I just bought holding on. Ford was profitable. GM was very profitable. This I'm still holding on to it. This was profitable also. Coca-Cola was profitable as you can see. Nike, let's look at Nike. Nike, Nike, Nike. So this was as you can see is, is a month. In a month's time. 54 to 50. 54 divided by 50.5. So that's 6.9%, almost 7%. 7% in one month. Okay? 7% in one month. So I, I think that's profitable. Oh, this was Nestle, I believe. Yeah, this was a good one too. This is also one month. So look how many times. I made positive trades, 73.5 divided by 66.33. So this is 10% or almost 11% in one month. NYMT, oh yeah, NYMT, we th I talked about it. So this I bought at 6.08. This I'm not selling, I'm holding on to it just for the dividends. 43 
35 dollars dividends i like this stock if it goes above seven then i'll sell but otherwise i'm keeping it for the dividends pfizer this it looks like two months 34 divided by 31 9.6 percent in two months another successful or positive trade qualcomm 53 to 59 i don't remember this wow how much time did this take from april to may come on one month in one month 59.5 divided by 53 12 percent in one month come on Sun Life, yeah, Sun Life was very good too. It was short. June 5th, July, yeah, a month and almost two months, a little bit less than two months. 47, from 43 to 47. So 47.5 divided by 4.37. So almost 9%. So 9% in less than two months, again, with another trade. Sun Life. And Sun Life, I could have held on to it. I think it's at 50 right now. And it pays good dividends. Tahoe Resources. Yeah, this one, good thing I sold. This is a messed up stock. I don't know why I bought into it. It was a bit risky. Bought it at 1025, sold at 1125, and got $2 dividends. And then after a few months later, dropped to 5 and $6. So, yeah, good thing I sold. And I, I could probably buy some more at uh, right now, but I don't have to. I think there's better, better. There are safer stocks out there. So ten fifty. So seven percent. So I made seven percent plus my two dollar dividends. Seven percent in March, April, in one month. Twitter. Twitter also seems to be a month and a half. From 15 to 16, not much, but it's still a month and a half. 16 to 15, six, almost seven percent in one month and a half. VRX, what's VRX? Oh yeah, Valiant Pharmaceuticals. Yeah, that was uh, that was a messy. Oh, I, I made two positive trades actually. Yeah, that one was scary. Bought it first at 21. Sorry, 23 divided by 21. 9.5% return in how much time? This is a record, I think. In 13, no, a month, okay. In a month, a month and a half. How much I forgot already? 10%, I think, 10, 23 divided by 21. Yeah, 9.5% in two months. Is it, no, in one month, 10% in one month. Okay, and um, and then I bought some, bought it again when it dropped, and then it dropped again. So another buying opportunity, but right at 18. But unfortunately, it dropped even more when I bought it at 18. Let's, I think it went back. I went to when I bought it at 18. Later on, it went, it dropped to 12, and that was another. I should have bought some more at 12, but I was scared because it's a pharmaceutical company, so it's very anything could happen. So it, it went, it dropped to 12. I got scared. I didn't. I should have bought some more, but I didn't. I just held on to it. But then eventually it went back up, and I sold as soon as I could. But it went even high. It went past 19. It went in the 20s afterwards. But I don't care. I was scared, so I just wanted to sell as soon as it went back up. So 18.95, 1895 divided by 1800. So this was five, five percent. Let's see in how much time. So from March to May. So April. So a month and a half. So here in, so I I made uh, profits with this stock twice. So once in a month and a half, I made I think we said nine or ten percent, and then a second time five percent, also in a month and a half. So look at how many times I made, uh, at least at least five or seven percent from from five to fifteen percent per trade. And this, I think I'm still holding on to it. Did I sell? No. What is this? Okay. No, this hasn't been sold yet. So I bought this at 81. I'm collecting a bit of dividends. $10, $9. Uh, let's see what it's... I haven't been following this one. Let's see what it's trading at. So this one is trading at 83. So it's 
positive right now but not enough to sell um, I went up to 84 three months yeah okay went up to 84 so if I sell now at 83 or even 84 uh, divided by 81 that would be 3.7 yeah I think I'll, I'll wait some more but that's a that's a very comfortable stock to hold that like I'm not worried about it it's <laughs> Exxon Mobil it's not going anywhere so that one I I'll probably sell at $88 and while I'm waiting I'm collecting dividends uh, what else what else I think that's it for investors edge yeah so that's it for investors edge so if we review out of how many transactions one two three four five six seven eight nine ten twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen but I think I had so this so this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So 23 trades out of 23 trades, only one, I'm st one, two, and three. So out of 23 trades, three I'm holding on to. Still, still not positive enough for me to trade. Three, so three I'm holding on to, and the rest have been positive trades. The the, the rest I've made uh, from between five and fifteen percent per trade. In 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 less than a year, and I didn't finish my year yet, so that's in my TFSA. My my RESP I just bought recently. There's nothing. Uh, no, I, I just bought some Enbridge, but still waiting for it to go back up. Let's look at quest trade. It's just it's, I'm trying to see if it can. Why it won't show me past three months? Why is it stuck? It's, why is it stuck at three months? It's limiting. Hmm. How can I show you more? Let's go to accounts maybe. Just gonna sign off from Investors Edge. So yeah. Questrade is it's cheaper, uh, it's easier to use. It's just that I started off with Investor's Edge first. That's why most of my money's with Investor's Edge. But um, Questrade is easier to use. The interface is simpler. It's faster, and if you want to open a Questrade account, there's a link at the bottom of the video with a referral code. If you use my referral code, you can get up to two hundred fifty dollars from Questrade just for opening uh, an account with that referral code uh, it depends how much it depends how much money you contribute uh, you start off with so if you I think if you start off with a thousand dollars you get twenty five dollars and I think if you put in ten thousand you get two hundred and fifty dollars cash back just just for contributing <coughs> so um, yeah okay so I just want to see activity Investment summary, account activity. Ten activities. View all. So Qualcomm fifty one eighty seven. Yeah, th that we saw. Ford. But why won't it show how much I bought? Uh, here we can change the dates date range 408 we want to go back there we go TFSA view all so this is uh, What, I bought at 90 call oh 
looks I, I bought some forward options at 90 cents sold it at a dollar ten let's see how much that gives us That's 22%. That's why I like buying options because the returns are higher. If the, st the good thing about options is if a stock moves like 5%, the, the option will move like 40%, 50%. But obviously, options is riskier because you're limited. The, the, you can buy it. It's good for a certain amount of time. For let's ex for, I think usually the max is two years. So if the, if the stock doesn't react the way you think it will in those two years, then you lose everything you put in in the option. But if you guess right, then you make way more money. So sometimes if, if, if I have a good idea that the stock will reach a certain price in a certain amount of time, then I, I'll buy the option because it'll be much more profitable. If you want a, if you want a video on how to what are options and how to trade options just mention it in the comments below and I'll make a video for options so let's see what else I bought up oh, so I bought one option here at a dollar fifty let's let's uh, can we filter on okay let's filter on trades view all all right so yeah this is the one we talked about so ford option a dollar fifty let's look where are some more fords and then i bought some more at a dollar fifty again so here six and one seven and then i sold seven for a dollar eighty so a dollar eighty divided by seventy uh dollar eighty divided by one fifty so twenty percent so i made twenty percent in how much time uh, January no is this January or August this is August sold in September so in one month made 22% one month 22% which is my goal per year is 20% in one month I made 22% uh, Teva uh, I'm losing on Teva let's not talk about Teva Verizon yeah Verizon was pretty good 43 here sold it at 47 but let's look at how much time so bought it in uh, this is july yeah bought it in july sold it in august bought it mid-july sold it actually sold it bought it july 7 sold it july 27 so in two weeks i went i from 47 to 43 nine percent in two weeks with verizon beautiful uh and obviously the ones so teva my average price for Teva is 15, so 16 and 14. Uh, not making money right now, but I'm holding on to it. I'm at a lost position, but it doesn't matter. I hold on to it until it goes back up, and then I'll sell. Um, Qualcomm. Qualcomm, I think, uh, was the first one I mentioned in the video. So here, there's not much activity in uh, with uh, question. Most of my trading is with investors. Uh, just because I started off with it, I would have to withdraw and recontribute, which is a hassle. But my my next contributions will, will be made directly to Questrade, just because I prefer the platform. Let's look at the uh, dividends I got here. I got seven dollars from Qualcomm. So wh while I held Qual Qualcomm for like a month and a half or two months, I got seven dollars uh, dividend. What are this? What is this deposit here? Oh, that's a contribution. To contribution oh, that this is a this was a um, referral uh, bonus $25 so someone opened an account with my referral code and contributed a thousand dollars so we each get $25 <coughs> so yeah question is not that exciting because um, I'm not using it that much let's see what else so yeah that's it so uh, I'll try to share my portfolio with you every day. And if you have any questions, any questions at all, any stock, if you have, uh, if you want to know any stock tips or if you want to learn how to trade options on any of the platform, either Quest Trade or Investor's Edge, just leave them in, in the comments below. 
All right, thanks for thanks for watching, and that's how I trade on the stock market.